Hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining this webinar with the University of Leeds. So today we are focusing on student life and opportunities here at Leeds. If you have any question, um, we will have time at the end of our presentation to discuss this with our panelists today. And uh, today's webinar will be about support and well-being and how you will be held while you're here at the University of Leeds. Just a friendly reminder, we would ask you to refrain from asking any questions throughout the presentation, as we will have a Q&A session at the very end of the presentation. If we can please go to the next slide. Thank you. So um, just to introduce myself, my name is Tanpreet and I'm now a final year BA Business Management student here at the University of Leeds. And originally I'm from Lucknow, India. Um, actually, I just came back two days ago from visiting my home country. So that was nice. And this is my third year as a Link to Leeds ambassador. And I'm also a peer support assistant working with the University of Leeds Career Service. And some of my hobbies, I enjoy baking, um, music and reading, mostly fantasy, but I try to keep a healthy balance. So if Michael, you'd like to introduce yourself, that would be great. Hello, hi, uh, my name is Michał Radolski or Michael. Um, I'm from Poland. Uh, and I'm doing my fourth year in integrated masters in mechatronics and robotics. Uh, this is my second year uh, as a link to Leeds ambassador. And um, I'm a part of many societies. I was a part of many societies, including from a student, ShockSock, and now the Engineering Excellence Society. And uh, I love playing guitar, I love hiking, and I love cooking. Latifa, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Latifa. Uh, I'm from Tashkent, Uzbekistan, from where I'm joining the webinar right now. I'm studying genetics at the University of Leeds. I'm a first year student, and it's also my first year as a Link to Leeds ambassador. Um, I'm a well being rep in Charles Morris residence, which uh, I'm joining because I really love organizing social events and meeting new people. I also like learning new languages. I am um, fluent in four languages and I also uh, love writing poems and books. Thank you so much. And Ryan, if you'd like to introduce yourself as well. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan. Um, I'm a final year um, cultural and media studies student. I'm originally from Lincolnshire in the UK, so a bit further down south. Um, and it's my second year as a student ambassador for the University of Leeds. Um, I came to the university through the Access to Leeds programme, so I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. Um, and throughout my time at Leeds, I've really enjoyed kind of getting involved with cooking, spending time with lots of my friends, and then and exploring lots of the green spaces that we have available. So thank you so much for all your introductions. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So we understand that coming to the university is a life changing experience, and we cannot wait to tell you more about how the University of Leeds is there to make this transition easier for you. So when you come, you're going to find support in regards to your well-being, engaging in your academic studies and help when you need a bit extra support. And of course, there is so much to discuss in this area, but today we will begin our focus on a first experience, which is with the welcome activities here at Leeds. Then we will provide more information to you about residence life, explain what are the student information services and what they do to help you, and explain what you can expect um, a bit more in terms of international student support as well. So we will also touch on the disability services, the healthcare and getting mental health and wellbeing support services here at the University of Leeds. And finally, we will explain more on what the Leeds University Union offers and how to find help in terms of excelling in your academics and overall holistic development as well. So let's begin and I hope you find it an interesting presentation. The webinar will be recorded. So if at any point you will like to refer back to it, you can easily access the recording as well. So um, talking about your first experiences here on campus, you will have is basically your arrival and settling into your campus. Before you arrive, you will get lots of information that would likely be by email about what to expect in your first few weeks and when your school orientation will be along those lines. 
So you'll find meet and greet services all around the campus. And if you're coming from abroad for the first time, there's even airport pickups from Manchester and Leeds Bradford available. And depending on your experience, you may also participate in PLUS program activities. If you're an international student, we would definitely recommend attending the international orientation facilities as well, because it's a bustling and thriving campus and there's so much to offer. So the more you can participate in, the better your experience will be. So now coming to the welcome week, finally. <laughs> The Welcome Week involves a wide range of events and activities to welcome new and returning students here at the University of Leeds. And we help students build a sense of belonging with the university. And Welcome Week is delivered in partnership with the University of Leeds, Leeds University Union, and of course, all the students here at the university. Activities um, can range for the freshest fair, accommodation mixes, barbecues, night markets, craft activities, um, you know, parties, um, events, which is called, we have a famous event called the Fruity Fridays and it's all full swing starting from the work of week. And there's so much more than I can tell, but I can obviously tell you that it's a very fun time to be around the university if you're a newcomer or a returning student. So Rianne, um, I would like to ask you, do you remember starting university and what were the resources and activities that you access and were available to you? So I remember when I when I started university, obviously it's so new, I didn't really know what to expect, but I arrived in September, very excited to get started. And I definitely made real use of that welcome week. There were so many activities, like you mentioned, there was night markets, there was society fairs, there was freshers fairs, and it was kind of going along and being surrounded by people that are actually in the exact same position as you. And it was a great way to kind of meet new people from pretty much anywhere and it was and there was no expectation that you had to know exactly what you're doing it was a case of hi I'm new as well let's let's sort of figure it out together um coming from access to leads I I had some awareness of some of the plus program activities that were happening um and they were definitely kind of um, kind of aimed at people that were coming from a background where they were coming maybe a bit further or um, they were a bit unsure about coming into this sort of new space. Um, but definitely that first week was full, exciting, amazing, all of the good bits. And that's a lovely experience, Rianne. And I think for me, it's been three years now, but I'm sure it was exactly the same excitement and no apprehension when meeting new people, because obviously everyone was in the same boat as we are. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. And Michael, I remember you said you worked at the Global Cafe. So for those of us who don't know here, could you tell us a bit more about what this is and why would it be beneficial? Yeah. Uh, of course. Uh, so for those watching us who don't know what Global Cafe is, um, it's an event that's held in a common ground cafe in LUU um, where you can come in, uh, get some complimentary snacks and drinks um, and uh, talk to new people. Basically, that's the whole point of the event. Um, and first of all, it's a great way of meeting new friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and while I worked here, worked there, uh, the main thing I was surprised on uh, was how many people turned up and as well as how how well everybody got along. So uh, I think it's a honestly great way. I didn't have a chance to attend it, but uh, if you're coming new, uh, as a new student to Leeds, it's a great way uh, to meet new friends. And uh, yeah, especially uh, if, if you first arrive in Leeds and uh, don't know anybody um, it's a great way to actually make new friendships and care for your well-being that's great thank you i remember in my first year because it was a pandemic we had online global cafes and from that we made like a whatsapp group of people that i asked to, i used to chat to quite often on teams mm -hmm. and that led to me founding my third future housemates as well and this year I was walking past Common Ground and I was like, wow, there's like 50, 60 people in queue standing to join the Global Cafe. So definitely a great place to start when you're first here at Leeds. So thanks for sharing that experience with us, Michael. So I'm uh, moving on to the next slide. Um, we'll talk about residence life a bit because for many of us, we understand coming to the university is the first time you leave your home. 
and that was similar for me as well. So if you choose university accommodation, you will be living with lots of other students and we make it really important to make sure that you feel comfortable and valued at university, but at the same time, you also feel that the university is becoming a new home for the next year and with the people you live in as well. So the residence life team offers support that is always there for you because they want you to love your time in the halls. Within the residence life team, you'll find wardens and assistants. There are staff available 24 seven to help with any problems. Uh, may it be big or small. I remember I lost my keys three times at least while I was at the residence. Um, not a very good impression on my part. I am promise I've become more responsible with my keys now, but they were really supportive and no one judged you ever. So that was great. Um, they also arrange great activities, which includes free breakfast, especially during exam periods, outdoor trips for hiking or visiting other cities, or organizing pet therapy in your own accommodation, which by far has to be my favorite. And if you're faced with a bigger issue, assistants and wardens will keep anything you tell them confidential, so you, they can help you in finding the best support within the university to carry your issue forward. Um, Latifa, um, I know you're a wellbeing rep in your accommodation. So what kind of activities are you involved in and how do you think this role is important for you as well as the other students you're around? So yeah, every accommodation has its own social committee who are the volunteers uh, to organize different social events for the residents, uh, for the people who live in that residence. Um, anyone uh, who lives in that particular residence can apply for it. Um, so it's a very good uh, opportunity to organize different trips, um, big or small events, for example, uh, for big ones, I can say Christmas ball uh, or any small um, um, events like games night for the uh, people who live in that particular residence to get to know each other and just have fun because uh, residence life can be stressful and you may, um, it may be difficult to find friends uh, in your accommodation, but it's, it's really fun if you have a friend who lives just in your accommodation. So we organized different trips. We organized trip to York this year and uh, also to Whitby. Uh, we also organized pet therapy, as you just mentioned, in Charles Morris. Uh, we organized uh, for the International uh, Students' Day. We organized the games uh, night. Uh, so uh, it's up to you uh, how many uh, events you organize. We also went to ice skating. Um, and most of uh, the students who lived in Charles Morris participated. They were all active. We also um, gave some prizes uh, who did the tasks uh, during the trip to York. So um, if uh, it's all up to your uh, imagination and you just discuss it with your residence uh, warden and organize it as a team, uh, as a social committee team, we have uh, meetings with our social committee every week. Uh, we discuss it, we help each other and we get to know to new people. So yeah, it's a great opportunity if you love participating in this kind of events or organizing this kind of events and you're, you wanna get creative, it's a great opportunity to become uh, a member of social committee. Wow, that sounds absolutely amazing. And thank you so much for the great work that you're doing. And I bet it's exciting. So thanks for sharing that with us, Latifa. So Thank now you. coming to the student information services, um, often when you're on campus, same happens with me as well. I just have a question or I need support with something. So one of the first places that I can go and you can go to as well to get in touch with the team that can help you with all sorts of queries is a student information service. So there are five student information service points on the campus, which are staffed by advisors and student ambassadors as well. So you can chat to the staff in person or they also have an area for you to chat to them privately in a confidential setting about any aspect of university life. They will listen to your situation, provide information, help, advice and tips on what to do next and signpost you to the best members of staff to speak to if they can't answer the question right there and then. 
But if you can't go in person, a team of advisors are available to talk to you via phone or you can send them an email as well. So some of the common inquiries that the team gets almost every day includes requests on help with administrative tasks, checks on dates and deadlines, and students wanting to know where they can get the help that they need in a particular area, and students updating on situations and circumstances that they're facing. So personally, I've stopped there a billion times to ask them questions about um, my visa because I was extending my visa to the placement. So I stopped there. They helped me, supported me, basically checked my entire application for me as well at one point of time. So that was really useful as well. So that is my personal experience. But Rianne, have you ever gone to any of the student information service points and asked them something? In my first year, I... Um, and to be honest, to this day, I'm not very good with technology. So I um, I remember coming to the university and I couldn't figure out how to get my laptop linked to all the different kind of, um, all kind of the internet mainly, but also kind of shared platforms and things. I was kind of really struggling and I, and I walked past the William Henry Bragg building and I popped in, asked them, and within five minutes, I was in the right place. I'd got it all sorted and I left with a smile on my face. And then I've kind of dropped it over, over the years about issues with deadlines and kind of moving accommodations and any kind of worries about that. And they've been so helpful and they can literally answer any question. They've They've probably heard all your questions before and they've got someone that they can either point you to or they've got it ready to give the answer. I can absolutely relate with the internet and technology issues because I am an absolute nervous when it comes to that. And especially in my first year when we had everything online, I could not figure out Blackboard for the life of me, which is a you know, service we use for lectures. So the number of emails I sent to that service, I think they might have blacklisted me, but they still help me every day. So that was amazing. And Rianne, thanks for sharing that with us. So moving on, we will now talk a bit about um, international student support. Um, as an international student, um, I can understand from personal experience as well that there can be a lot more to take in, especially just by moving across the world to live in a completely new country. So some things are still new to me and I've been here for the past four years. I've just come back from home and I feel like I am on a complete factory reset and everything seems new to me. So absolutely sympathize with anyone who's coming here. But there's lots of support available here at the university. And before you arrive, you can get um, help from the international office and possibly even meet members of staff in your country. So there are also regional teams located in China, India, Malaysia, and Nigeria that represent large regions and you can contact them with any questions you have or you can contact students like us via the link to lead service and we will be happy to help you and answer any questions. So you can attend a range of events online before your arrival too, which can help you prepare in the best possible way. And thank you to all of you who are attending this event today as well. So talking a bit about the Student Visa Advice Center, they can answer questions about visas and immigration even before you come or during your studies if you have any issues. So as I mentioned, for example, I did a placement year due to which I had to extend my visa from three years to four years. So in that scenario, the student visa advice team and they helped me figure out all the logistics of how to reapply for an extension. And they checked my application for me, made sure I knew how to submit uh, the visa fees and everything. So that was really helpful. And this is a very popular option that people do. So, um, you know, this is a lot of people who do placements and study abroad, so it's quite a great help that you can get from them. And there's lots of support and information available uh, on graduate route visa as well once you arrive, since this is another popular option for many international students after they graduate. So don't worry, you can get help about this as well. And we know moving countries can require additional support and the university is ready for you when you get here. So, Michael, um, my question to you is, why do you think it's important for students to contact Link to Leeds ambassadors like us, not to hoot my own horn, but here we go. Uh, so, I presume that everybody uh, is familiar with, uh, with Link to Leeds as you're attending the event hosted by us. Um, but uh, just to summarize, it's an organization within the 
international office, which helps international students with basically any issues they may have. Um, and even if we are not trained or if we are not able to help you, we can always uh, direct you to the right place, uh, to the right person. Um, and we have a whole army of ambassadors um, to cover as many courses or nationalities as possible. So you can always find somebody to relate to, uh, find somebody with similar experiences that you can ask uh, about those experiences. And yeah, you can always message us on anybody anytime you like. Um, you can find us on our website. You can f uh, find me, Rian, uh, Latifa, or uh, so. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. It's uh, great, but yeah. don't worry. Uh, but yeah, you can find all of us on uh, Unibody and uh, you can always message us uh, about attending and live, living at the University of Leeds. Uh, and yeah, as well, you can uh, always uh, look at our fruitful social media uh, with a very uh, big output. Uh, they always uh, output a lot of information about the university and living here. And also you can read uh, one of our uh, wonderful blogs about a uh, plethora of topics really on um, anything you will ever need. Definitely agree. I you mentioned that there's an army of ambassadors and that definitely feels like the case, especially when we are all together for, you know, meet and greets or for induction events. Every time I'm surprised by how many ambassadors there are. So definitely reach out to us. We would be more than happy to help. And my question to you, Latifa, now would be if you could share some quick tips for any international students that are joining here for this um, event today. So most important tip uh, I think is participating in the welcome events. So uh, all the students are usually uh, sent out a welcome uh, week timetable. So there will be different webinars which they even can join before they arrive uh, because they will be online. So um, you all will be given all the information you need from in detail from how to open a bank account to how to stay safe and what to do if something happens, what, what to do if you don't have money at night and you want to get a taxi. So it's just uh, uh, all the information is given to you to be safe, um, be prepared and just study, uh, not worrying much about your uh, safety. Uh, so I would recommend to participate in webinars and uh, go and seek out the help go and ask uh, from a student information point and they will di direct you to the right place to the right team and not to worry much about um, how I will do this and how I will do that you will figure it out and also participate in the social events because it may be stressful if you just uh, are over, overwhelmed in a different country without your friends, without your family. Just go and participate in the events put, uh, organized by your accommodation or the LUU uh, because um, we need to be, uh, we just need to get out of our comfort zone and meet new people and then we, may, we will feel better after socializing. Thank you so much for that, Latifa. I think if there's a common theme in this webinar is that all of us are going to tell you participate in as many new things as possible, because that's the way you navigate university one step at a time. So if you take one thing, that is the one thing you take from this webinar. Thank you so much for that, Latifa. So moving on to the next slide, please. So before we begin discussing this, it is important to know that any disability or impairment is taken very seriously here at Leeds and information you provide with the disability service team is kept absolutely confidential. Also, um, we understand that a disability might not be physical. It could impact your learning. So if you're confused, you could reach out to your disability services team. And they work with our academic schools and other university services to make sure your needs are met and any reasonable adjustments are put in place. 
So I urge you to please don't hesitate in letting the university know after you start your course. The earlier they know about your needs, uh, the sooner they will ensure you start your course um, in a place where you're ready and um, your needs are met and they can arrange the right support available to you. So um, now something that you might need to think about in terms of your well-being and support is what to do when you actually get sick. You'll get lots of information about this before your arrival closer in the summer. But briefly, um, for our international students as well, um, you will need to register with a GP. And as a UK home student, you will need to change your GP um, from your hometown to Leeds. Um, a GP is a short term for general practitioner, and they are what you would consider your everyday doctors that you see in clinics or small centers rather than big hospitals. Um, if you're an international student, you will be paying an immigration health surcharge that will make you eligible for the National Health Services here, also known as the NHS. So we know you're bound to get sick. You know, all of us get the famous freshest flu at some point of time at the university. Um, you're going to be living and communicating with lots of new and different people on a daily basis when you first arrive. So it's bound to happen. But just to let you know, we have services available to help you here. Um, Quick question to you, Michael. Do you have any experience of getting sick, like daily sickness? And how did you tackle that? Um, yeah, fortunately, I, I stayed uh, mostly healthy. Uh, but uh, there were times where obviously I got um, some kind of uh, cold or anything like that. So for small uh, sicknesses, like small colds or uh, anything like that, um, the first point of contact uh, when you need it you can go to a pharmacy. Uh, there's one just opposite of uh, the Parkinson building. Uh, and the one time I needed to go to the doctor uh, was when I had a severe uh, wisdom toothache. And uh, that's when I called uh, my insurance and they arranged the, a call with doctor for me who then prescribed me the, with like antibiotics and painkillers. And then obviously I could go to the pharmacy and get everything I needed as well. well. I'm glad you didn't fall severely ill, Michael, because that is never fun. But thanks for sharing that. And um, also, just as a reminder, we also have a session about this uh, during the international orientation. So for any international students, um, don't worry, this is recorded as well. And we have further sessions on this in the international orientation week. So Rianne, um, how about you? Do you remember a time you were sick and what did you do mainly um, to take a leave of absence from your classes like lectures? So I remember a big kind of sickness I had whilst I've been at university is I've sadly got coronavirus two or three times um, purely from mingling with all of my friends and kind of meeting all these new people. Um, it was bound to happen at some point. Um, but when it came to requesting that sort of leave of absence from classes you kind of can make good use of the Minerva service that we have so all of your information will be on there anyway but it's a case of using that kind of student service going on and putting in the reason why you're sick for how long you think you're going to be away for and then getting to, and then getting in touch with 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 those lecturers they're very understanding they are, they are very aware that these things happen, everyone gets ill, um, but as long as you make them aware that obviously you are not going to be around, they know to not expect you, but also they know that you might need that little bit of extra support if you're going to be having some time away. Um, but, de but definitely um, getting in touch with them, because if they don't know, they can't help. Um, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. And yeah, definitely falling sick is not fun. Getting coronavirus three times is not fun either. But I'm glad you were sorted and knew what to do. So thank you for sharing that with us. So um, now coming to well-being and mental health support. Even before you arrive here, a network of well-being and support services dedicated to you will be available. And you can get help and advice about money issues, health concern, disability support and much more. You can access free professional and confidential counselling services from the Student Counselling and Wellbeing Service here at the University. And the Student Counselling and Wellbeing Service is a multi-professional team of counsellors, wellbeing practitioners and mental health advisors. 
They offer free and confidential support to students during their time at the University of Leeds. By booking online, you can book a 30-minute wellbeing drop-in or an online um, session as well. You can also get wellbeing and mental health support through groups, workshops, um, single session consultations and web-based resources. So personally, um, I've booked on to um, the counselling sessions with a practitioner here at the University of Leeds and I, my practitioner suggested me to book a series of four, suggest uh, four sessions, um, each happening fortnightly, so I could discuss my issues with them um, in a confidential manner and it really helped me um, um, by talking to someone else, sharing my experience, they gave me some great advice and most importantly, listen to me, which I think um, a lot of us need at different moments of time. So that was quite useful. Um, Rianne, um, have you ever tried to access any of the support? And if you don't mind sharing that with us, that would be great. And um, this sort of support is something that I think a lot of people might be a bit confused about how to kind of get in touch with because it's not something that people kind of it's not going to be advertised massively but definitely within the university there is a push for people to get talking um and kind of reach out to these kind of facilities that are on offer to us um i know that i found it really easy to access them through um, the kind of university of leeds student app that we have it makes it really kind of accessible. You can be in the middle of town and suddenly you think, oh, I need to sign up for this. I need to book a drop in for this. And the forms on there, you go on, fill it out and put 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 your concerns and they'll put you in touch with, with the right people that can give you the best support possible. Um, th they've always been a very welcoming team. You can literally go to them with anything. There's no judgment. There's no sort of negative connotations around it. It is kind of as it is whatever you kind of need, they can provide the support with. Thank you so much for sharing that, Rianne. And absolutely agree, the app is very useful. It's like a click and there you are, access to all the different facilities that we have here at the university. So thanks for reminding us about that. Um, additionally, as students, um, what we're going through recently is called the assignment and exam period. So I think we can all very much agree that it's easy to get overwhelmed with the amount of coursework and assignments we have due. So we're going to touch on a few things we do to ensure we have a good academic and social balance throughout the semester and how you can um, manage this. So moving on to the next slide, please. So we all have our own ways of how to help and manage stress and it's okay to take some time to figure out what this might be, especially um, if you're coming to the university for the first time. Firstly, um, how I like to bind down or in my case, um, try something new is by going on hiking trips or exploring new cities. So we have a service within the Leeds University Union that's called Get Out, Get Active. And they organize some lovely weekend, um, you know, day long trips or sometimes weekend trips as well. So I recently went to the Lake District for a hike, which was quite wonderful. Um, it was raining, so that usually happens in this country. But other than that, lovely sights. Um, I got a great long walk, so that's quite useful for me. So that was my personal experience with Get Out, Get Active. But we have lots of other things available here. Um, Michael, is there anything you do to you know manage stress and stay healthy in general? I can see a lovely picture on the slide as well. Uh, yeah. uh, so um, actually, yes, uh, I've been... Um, as for staying healthy, uh, we have a great gym at the universe at the campus called the edge. Uh, I go there. I usually aim for going there three times a week, but you know how it is. Um, um, so, uh, it's a very nice, nice gym with, which I like because it's very close to the uni, uh, very close to where I live. And it also has, uh, modern equipment. So it's, it's, um, it's a pleasure to, <laughs> to go there really, um, with the membership to the edge, you can also, uh, book the, uh, climbing wall or the, uh, go to the pool for me, uh, I usually book the badminton court with my friend um, and it's free with our men membership. So that's great. And as for managing stress for me, um, there's nothing really better than uh, going to the swimming pool that we have in edge as well. It's always uh, the best for clearing your mind. 
uh, of any exams or any problems that you may have. Uh, and obviously, as you, as Tampreet mentioned, when it gets when it gets warmer, the Yorkshire and surrounding counties like Lake District in Cumbria are the one of the most beautiful places in the UK. So um, I also cannot really understate how much I recommend uh, just going uh, out there at least once. Thank you so much for sharing that. So we often mention that Leeds is a perfect balance between being a city where you can you know do all this experience it, but we're also in a very lucky place in Yorkshire. We have a lot of um, places and Greenland to go around. So for any people who love nature, um, you're in the best spot possible. So thanks for that, Michael. Um, Rianne, I would like to ask if you have any tips that can help future students manage stress. And to be honest, I can do with some as well. <laughs> I've um, I've definitely learned in my coming up three years at Leeds that balance is really important. I think when when I when I first came to university, I sort of had in my head that it was all about university. It was all about your studies kind of academics, sitting in the library, working, reading. But actually, as I've gone through, I've kind of come to the realisation that actually sitting and doing something that isn't university work is just as beneficial as sitting and reading a book. And actually making the most of the city around you. Leeds is such a beautiful city. There is so much happening. There's so many events going on. And actually... To be in a city like that, it would be almost wrong to not make the most of it. And it and it gives you that downtime to actually step away and get a bit of perspective. Because I know that I found, especially in exam season like we're in currently, I can sit and look at an essay for four hours, but actually going out for a walk into the city, going meeting my friends, having some food, coming back, you look at things with such a better perspective. So I think having that balance making sure you're prepared so make sure you know when things are happening but also in knowing that knowing what time you have to yourself to sort of do a bit of self-care that's great thank you so much for that Rianne and I completely agree I sometimes feel guilty if throughout you know the day is coming to an end I haven't gone outside for a walk so that's definitely something that I agree, agree with that Leeds is such a wonderful city so make sure to make the most of it while you're here so um, last but not the least, Latifa, do you do anything that helps you relax from your studies? Yep, just as Michael mentioned, there is a big swimming pool uh, in the edge, which I also want to mention that has uh, only ladies slot every Tuesday. Uh, so it's really comfortable for ladies who, uh, for some reason, want to go to uh, to the swimming pool, but when you go in a separate slot where when only ladies can go in and no one can take photos. Um, I also uh, love going out and seeing new places. So um, as uh, all the students, I think, should uh, see all the nearest uh, cities around Leeds, uh, see the nature and uh, the beauty of the uh, Yorkshire and also um, if um, for some reason they don't want to go out because for example they don't have anybody to go out with but they don't want to go out alone and uh, there are clubs and societies which they can join and go to the events organized by and make a new friends for example I joined the Turkish society and also ISOC uh, Islam Society, which uh, both of which organize a lot of events, uh, which I love joining and talking to the other participants and just seeing new people. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that, Latifa. And you actually brought us to a very smooth transition by talking about societies, because next up we're talking about the very famous Leeds University Union. So I should possibly have had a drum roll for this because um, Leeds University Union is one of the best unions in UK among all the other universities. And um, I think all of us can agree it's the thriving heart of the university. So what is the university union? 
for people who don't know, in simple terms, a students' union is an independent organization that exists to represent students and their interests to the university, as well as on a local and national scale by giving them a voice on the things that matter to them. And Leeds University Union exists to make sure that students absolutely love their time here at Leeds. So this is their go-to place for everything from representation and advice to societies and club nights. So all the good stuff is happening here when you come to Leeds. So it is very important that we talk about the student union, not just because it's such a fun place to be, but also when referring to your well-being, as there is no way you'll be a student at Leeds and not be involved in union in some way or the other. So whether you come to the union to have lunch here, we have some absolutely amazing places. We have the Common Ground Cafe, we have Humpit, which is a lovely Greek place. We have sushi, boba, ice cream. I can just keep going on. There's so many things here. Or if you're here to hang out with your friends in one of our lovely cafes and food places, or you might be part of a society, or you're here using one of our services, so whether that be well-being and support or student information service, I am sure you'll be at the university union almost once or twice a week, if not daily, like me. So moving on to the next slide, please. Um, we will talk about support that you can get from the union. So when things quite don't go quite to plan, which always happens, we're all humans, whether it be in your personal life or your academic life, the Leeds University Union a Student Advice Centre is available, free of charge to all University of Leeds students. They offer expert advice in person, online or via email. And just to make sure that the service is absolutely confidential, which means they won't share your private information or talk to anyone about what you have told them. They're also independent from the university. So if you're having any problems with your course or your school, you can talk to them freely about it. The remit is um, wide with no problem being too big or too small. So no matter the issue, they will work hard to get you the help that you need. So whether it is an issue with a housing deposit, conflict with your housemates, exam results to appeal or financial worries, they can offer practical solution. And they're also here to support you through personal and emotional challenges as well. So basically what we mean to say is whatever your issue is, you will find support at the Leeds University Union. So now coming to the most exciting part for me, it's the student societies. So if you want to keep an existing interest, try something new. There are over 350 plus societies for you to join as a student and they encompass everything from um, dance, music, international student societies, um, professional and social sports, sky's the limit. And the best thing that I found in my first year is if you don't like any societies, which is very hard, when there are 350 plus, you can also make your own society by bullying five friends. And there you go, you have your own society. So um, we're always looking for new societies. Hopefully some of you who join us at the university find some good clubs. I remember in my first year, I joined the Harry Potter Society. I am one of those nerds. Um, and that was fun, especially because they had a lot of online quizzes um, for all the Harry Potter nerds out there. That was quite interesting and then my friend also bullied me to go to spin class with her which was a part of a health and well-being society i never did that again but again it's about fresh and new experiences so just to let you know there's so much available sky's the limit you can also learn about a new culture and latifa mentioned being part of the tech society um you can learn a new skill we have baking societies here or just use society as an, as an opportunity to meet new people and do something fun. It's a great way to de-stress throughout the week and take a break from your academics as well. So enough of my talking about this. Um, Rianne, um, have you been involved in any societies? And if you'd like to share your experience with us. So I mostly have been involved in societies to do with my course. So the Media Society, getting involved with the social events they put on kind of on a weekly basis whether it's a quiz whether it's going into town whether it's we've done crafts we had pizza night we've been for picnics in the summer doing all sorts of things and my one of my loves in life is I joined the coffee society which holds a dear place in my heart um for my coffee loving um nature um 
and it is a great way to meet loads of new people but also people that you have one thing in common and actually having that one thing in common means that you get to know a lot more about a person and you sort of broken the ice already you've got something to talk about you don't need to sort of come up with something on the spot um but yeah societies are fabulous absolutely agree with that thank you so much Rian. um michael how about you have you been involved in any societies and how have they helped you uh well um i have other societies i could talk for a whole day um but i'm not sure if exactly they help me with my well-being because because i usually get myself involved with leadership roles and they always take me more time than my actual university uh but i'm obviously kidding Uh, they are always um fabulous uh group of friends um they are always uh very passionate about uh what uh, the society is about uh, in the societies i met uh, so many people that um yeah, yeah are passionate about the top so passionate about the topic they could talk about it for hours um so i've been involved in academic societies since i um joined the, the uni four years ago uh and but this year, uh, I tried something new. As you said, I tried uh, making my own society this year, uh, yeah. and I'm very happy about it. It's a quite long and arduous process with a lot of paperwork, uh, but it gives you so much satisfaction to actually produce something uh, new, produce something that you're uh, proud of and sort of leave your mark uh, here at the university. Uh, and also, we got a lot of support from LU activities officers, and uh, it's just great to have that op- th- that kind of opportunity, uh, which is quite rare, I think. Thank you so much for sharing that, Michael, and I wish you all the best with your new society. Um, if it's not related to engineering, I'd like to know more about it. <laughs> but um, yeah, societies, doing leadership roles, getting your own societies is also a great way to you know, build your CV, build those employability skills. So definitely recommend that as well. Latifa, I know you've already touched a bit about societies, so I'll just go on to the next slide and come to you for that. Thank you. So um, coming to academic support, if we can go to the next slide, please. So there are four libraries on campus, all providing the most up-to-date facilities, um, including online research journals and amazing study spots. We now have the Laidler Library open 24-7 during um, throughout the year, except bank holidays. So you know, that's a great way if you like to study late during the night like me. So you can go to the Laidler Library easily. And Skills at Library supports students to develop academic skills within the curriculum. Um, through online resources, workshops, one-to-one appointments, and drop-in sessions as well. Um, If you are interested in languages, um, Language Zone gives you access to free resources to help you learn a new language as well. This includes up to 50 languages, including English. And they have a range of workshops and activities to help you practice and improve your language skills and, you know, dive deeper into maybe something you did in your A-levels or GCSEs. Um, Rianne, um, just quickly to ask you, do you have any experience with this with any of these library services? So I was made aware of the library services through doing access to leads. So we completed a lot of the um, kind of skills at library workshops. So we looked a lot at note taking, um, kind of tips with academic reading and um, to do with references and how best to approach this new form of learning Um, and actually then coming into it the library then I was aware of a lot of the services they could offer it's quite a reassurance coming in that that support would still be there even after I'd arrived at Leeds. Um, Thanks so much for that Rohan and just to let everyone know we have a wide range of blogs on our link to Leeds website about this so make sure you check them out and follow us on Instagram because we keep sharing, you know, amazing reels about our lovely libraries that we have here at the university. So follow for that as well. So moving on to the next slide, we'll talk a bit about personal tutors. And all the students here at the University of Leeds have a personal tutor there to support you through your learning journey and to make sure you feel that you belong to this community and you're a part of this community as well. So who is a personal tutor? 
Um, there are a member of academic staff at the new school who will get to know you on a more personal level and is available for one-to-one -one chats when you need them. They can give advice, guidance and encouragement and help you address any challenges you face so you can make the most of your experience at Leeds. Um, Latifa, um, I just wanted to touch with you. Have you met your first tutor and how's your experience been with them? Yes, I did. Um, it was my uh, tutor for one of my modules and uh, she was great. I uh, She helped me not only with my um, academic problems, but also personal troubles. Uh, she also helped me with my government scholarship from my own home country, which she had no responsibility of. She wrote me a reference letter uh, explaining uh, uh, about my uh, success in that module uh, in my university. So I think um, it's a great way to uh, solve any of your problems to approach to your personal tutor and get directed to the right thing. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that, Latifa. Um, also, personal tutors, as we've all mentioned, are a great resource and we would encourage for you to get to know your personal tutor as soon as you start here at Leeds. And just to mention, they will also be providing references for you. So if you're applying for your job and you need some references, your personal tutor should be a first go to place. And it always helps if they know you on a personal level as well. So the reference can be top notch and amazing. So we're almost coming towards the end of this presentation. So just to let you know about any future events, we will have so many events coming up to help you prepare better for your future at Leeds. In every webinar, you'll hear from current students talking about their own personal experience. So you can scan this QR code um, to find out more about the webinars that we have coming up. Um, we can't wait to tell you more about how Leeds better prepares you for your future professional self as well. So we will have webinars uh, ranging from academic support to specialized career help as well. And we also have Q&As along with webinars. So even if you want to just come along and ask a question, you should check out our future dates using that QR code. And don't worry, this is recorded as well. So you can go back to this slide and check the QR code again. So um, moving on to our final slide before we go to Q&A, um, if you want to know more about um, Leeds, you want to chat to current students, as we've mentioned throughout this webinar, you can scan this link and go to Link to Leeds, where we have a lot of blogs and a lot of ambassadors available. And um, you can chat to one of our current students, including all of us, through Unibuddy and find out what it's like to be a part of community at Leeds. Again, we are on social media as well, so um, check out our blogs, our social channels, register to our Unibody account to find out about all the future events that we'll be having online. Um, but yeah, again, back to the link to lead slides before we move on to the Q&A, I just want to highlight where you can find so much more information about link to leads and what we can offer, which includes events like this, blogs, and um, we have a whole website sharing all of this, so please check it out. So now for the interesting part, we've got around five minutes left and um, we'll be taking any questions that you would have. I know our amazing ambassadors has been, have been answering a lot of questions as we've been doing this presentation, but we'll just cover some of them here in this presentation. Just let me see, manage all the systems and pick up questions that we have. So the first question that we've got is scholarships for international students. Um, if, again, if you chat to one of our Link to Leeds ambassadors, they can share with you the course pages, which have all the scholarship information available as well. And if any of my fellow ambassadors here have some, um, you know, information or idea about this, if you'd like to share. I know Latifa, I think you mentioned something about a scholarship. Uh, actually, it was the government scholarship from my home country, but I know some um, different scholarships for different countries, uh, which they can check from the website. Uh, one scholarship was uh, if you get 80 plus from foundation year, um, you get like 
um, about 15% of scholarship. I'm not pretty sure. It's just the scholarship I was told when I was studying on my foundation year. But um, they can check what scholarships they are. Uh, uh, they can apply for uh, according to their uh, program of study and which country they're from and their uh, the other requirements. That's great. Thank you so much. And again, if you have any particular questions, um, I would recommend um, on asking one of our ambassadors on our university chat and they can share the specific scholarships that they have for the course that you're looking to apply for. But yeah, thanks, Latifa. Um, the next question that we have is where to find information on societies? So this is very simple. We have a Leeds University Union page. So if you literally type in the web browser Leeds University Union, you can find our um, different societies that we have on offer. And we also have a page which is called Engage at Leeds, where you can see all the events that the societies are running. Currently, we're in a fresh start period. So our second semester is starting next week and next week will be full of different activities to welcome students back on campus. So yeah, this is the engaged page as Michael has just shared. Um, you can look at the different events that are happening here. So thank you so much for that, Michael. Um, I'll quickly move on to the next question now and let someone else do the talking for a bit. Um, do you have to pay for the membership of the Ed Gym? So if anyone would like to pick this up. So I can um, take that. So I think uh, we already answered that on the chat. So uh, to re reiterate, uh, if uh, there is a paid membership to the uh, to um, to the edge, there are two sort of. Uh, if you're a student, you have a discount, obviously. Uh, but there are two levels of a membership. There is an off-peak hours membership, and there is a premium membership. So if you are li living in the uh, halls in the university halls, um, you automatically get the off-peak hours membership. Uh, so off peak hours means every day uh, before 11 a.m. and the whole day uh, for Saturday and Sunday. Um, so you get that automatically with the uh, with the halls, and uh, it's free uh, if you're living in the halls. Obviously, you get it automatically. But you can also then, if you're living in the halls and you want to upgrade to the premium membership, you can also uh, do that as well. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, any more questions? Um, um, I don't think we have any more questions. Our lovely ambassadors have managed to answer all of them, so that's great for us. But um, just to mention a bit more about how you can tackle homesickness if you're moving away from home, if you know that might be moving somewhere from England to Leeds or you're coming from outside, I think what helps for me is um, keeping in touch a bit with my um, family and friends back home. You know, we have all the range of video calls and features available and also joining some cultural societies, specifically du uh, during festivals so that you don't feel alone and you know, you're celebrating with the community and you make your own little bubble here at Leeds as well. We have lots of different societies here. So during festivals and fully, I attend a lot of events with um, the Indian society as well. So um, that makes me, you know, feel right at home, even though I'm away from home. So Leeds has kind of become my second home, you could say, in the past three to four years. But yeah, that's how I do. Um, anyone else, if you'd like to pick up a bit on this, how you tackle homesickness? I totally agree with you. For example, um, from my own experience, um, I joined the Islam Society and we had a sleepover with sisters in the Grand Mosque where I, I even had experience that I, did, I, never, I have never had in my own home country. We usually celebrate a Eid um, with the other sisters. And so uh, the feeling of um, being involved and having people alike and celebrating the... Uh, uh, holidays that you used to celebrate in your home country makes uh, makes it a lot better uh, and even on your birthdays uh, sometimes you may be alone because uh, you're not in your home country and uh, you're all you're in a new place and you don't have your friends 
uh, but you can always make a video call and feel like you're home make a online uh, celebration so it's always up to you um, you can just try to get involved and feel your uh, family and friends around because it's like 21st century you can always make a video call even if like it's not the same but it can be better than being alone I definitely agree. And that sleepover sounds amazing, Latifa. Um, I'm sure you had lots of fun on that. Yeah, um, we did. Just while you're here, I have another question specifically for you. Um, since you did an international foundation year, where do you have teaching? Is it on campus or is it somewhere else when you're doing the international foundation year? It's on campus. It's just the same as the undergrad and masters. Uh, your uh, your lectures and seminars will be in different buildings. Uh, you will be given lectures by the tutors of the university. Uh, you will be given an accommodation, and you will also be given the free membership because you're living in the university halls. So you will have all the priorities, all the opportunities uh, the other students are given while they're studying undergrad or masters. Um, that's great. Thank you so much, Lutifa. So just to reiterate, if you're doing a University of Leeds International Foundation year, you will be just like any other students who are studying here at the University of Leeds. You will be going to our buildings, having lectures and seminars there and you'll get accommodation on campus or uh, University of Leeds accommodation and you'll be living with all the other students who are studying here at Leeds yeah. and get the um, But yeah, I think that's for all our questions here today. If any of my other ambassadors would like to share any final thoughts before we leave. But yeah, if not, thank you so much for joining our webinar today. It's been so fun sharing all our experiences with you. I think I can say on behalf of all of us. Um, uh, thank you for joining. This is recorded. Um, you can sh see um, the streaming afterwards. You can access the recording anytime you'd like. And as I've mentioned a hundred times now, we would love to answer any questions that you have. So make sure you reach out to us on LinkedIn Leads, Unibuddy, follow us on socials. We do a lot of takeovers on our social media as well. So follow us through there, see our journey. And we look forward to seeing a lot of you in Leeds sometime soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dumfried. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Thanks, bye everyone.